Okay, I'm saying this right now. Unlike my last Braid My Shelves, this will not be a weekly vlog because this, she is not happening in a week. <laughs> Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are going to be doing the second round of Raid My Shelves, this time with Nonfiction November as the theme. Before we get into anything bookish, however, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as tell me in the comments, what is one nonfiction book on your shelves that you are looking forward to? So last time round for my Raid My Shelves, which is the video excuse I came up with to try and clear out all of my own TBR, because it was only a weekly vlog. However, this baby is... <laughs> How long are you? 664 pages. I can guarantee this will not happen in a week, especially when I already have another book to start as well. So rather, this one is going to be a combination of many a weeks. I'm going to try and segment this out to give myself easy goals throughout the month. Maybe to read like 100 pages a week. That sounds pretty reasonable. Actually, no, <laughs> that wouldn't be all in one month than that. Uh, let's go with 150 pages a week. For the final week when I'm reading this and nearly done, that week it'll be a vlog and I'll finish it out. And then for the rest of that week, I'll read Hunger by Roxane Gay. As I mentioned, both of these books are nonfiction and we're on my nonfiction November TBR. I have been looking forward to the both of them. Hunger is by Roxane Gay and her previous work that I read, Bad Feminist, I really enjoyed. So I've been very excited to get to this one. It's actually on my anticipated five-star reads. Helter Skelter is a true crime story, which is following the murders of the Manson family. And I've been really interested in reading this. I picked this up in my little free library vlog and so now I'm going to make myself read it. I believe Dasha from Mythic Pages read this last month and was really enjoying it. As for Hunger, this is actually Roxane Gay's memoir. These are, as I said, completing prompts for nonfiction November. Hunger is going to be completing style. While Helter Skelter <laughs> is written by Vincent Bugliosi, who is a lawyer, the law industry is a thing, so this will be completing industry. <laughs> I keep saying that, but every time I say it, I just don't sound convincing because I'm not sure sure if what I'm saying sounds like it makes sense because it doesn't sound like it to my ears. So yes, this was a little intro. I will be updating you guys hopefully whenever I have read probably 150 pages of Helter Skelter. Hopefully it'll be later this week. <laughs> Hey y'all, so I have surpassed my first little section for the first week and already this book is insane. The amount of ego from the cops that stops them from actually being able to make strides forward and the fact that so many people try to bring different pieces of evidence to the police's attention and they just disregard it. They don't pay attention and oh my god, it is so frustrating. Moved into part three which the investigation. I also do like that the first portion of the book is laying out the actual crime and kind of explaining the background of all of the victims. We don't get too much of a background into the different perpetrators and the members of the family. Now in the second part, Vincent Bugliosi introduces himself, who he is, what he is going to be doing as the story progresses forward, and then starts to dive into each of the members of the Manson family. I also enjoy that he mentions how he just did not expect that this case was going to blow up into what it did and that he was going to have so much of his life dedicated to trying to bring these people to justice and again this 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 case is just insane and it's it's fascinating the section I'm currently in is we're diving into some of the background on Charles Manson and with that we're kind of seeing what his upbringing was like and starting to see how he showcased these different psychopathic tendencies from a very early age and even even though he didn't have the highest IQ when he was like a teenager, he still was very good at manipulating people. And ugh, it's fascinating from a psychological standpoint. That's one of the things I knew I was really going to enjoy going into this. Where my little flag is, I've already surpassed a little bit from where I wanted to read for the first week. And it's frustrating because I want to keep going, but I need to prioritize other books for the rest of the week. I have to put it down for now, but I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm definitely enjoying it. It's, it's insane, but gosh, is it fascinating? Hey y'all, so I have, technically speaking, 
hit my next little segment um even though my bookmark is actually in the middle of all the photos i actually got a free version of audible so i could get the audiobook for this and i've been listening along but <laughs> i hit the next segment then realized oh wait that means i didn't get to read any of the little fun parts for the photos so i'm now going back in and reading all the little excerpts that we have that go along with each of the photos that are used and it's really interesting but the aspect i have just surpassed was specifically looking at the motive that they are trying to figure out for the crimes that the manson family committed and it's been fascinating just listening to all the different things that manson would pull together to be a part of his rhetoric for his cult and how he twisted these things to make them believe that a certain situation was happening and that's why they needed to do what they did. It's just so crazy, but so fascinating. And all of the different aspects that he linked together, whose brain comes up with this kind of stuff? At one point, it's just talking about how all of the different things he presents to the family are all contrary to each other. And yet no one questions this because they just have such faith in Charles Manson. There's also plenty of stuff in here that's pretty disgusting too. Also, there's a segment where Charles Manson makes this big deal out of wanting to be his own lawyer and all I can think is that scene from The Adams Family where Gomez is deciding he's gonna be his own lawyer. They say a man who represents himself has a fool for a client. Well, with God as my witness, I am that fool. So freaking good. <laughs> I don't remember if I mentioned previously, but we actually aren't really introduced to Vincent Bugliosi as the lawyer until I think about part three. For the first two sections of the book, he actually puts a lot of focus on the crimes and the victims themselves and the entire unfolding of how the police eventually figured out that it was the Manson family who was behind this. He does introduce himself and since then, now he's become a bigger player within the story. Writing he has around himself as an individual makes it seem like he thinks very highly of himself. Not to say that's a bad thing or anything, but I think it just comes across in a bit of a negative way. He's a little unlikable of a narrator whenever that happens. <laughs> Ignoring that though, this book is still so fascinating. Like the amount of detail paid to all of the little things that went into this case and the eventual connection we actually find between Manson and the victims just and I love how he highlights the fact that drugs were put as the blame for the things that happened so often and so many times people just tried to make it seem like LSD was responsible for what happened because they just could not wrap their heads around the fact that someone out there could actually do these terrible things to people. And, but like, oh my god, people are awful. I need to get started on reading into the last little bit. I have no idea when that's gonna happen though because I'm probably prioritizing a different book right now, so. Hey guys, what's up? Technically speaking, I should be at this little sticky note already. As we can tell, I'm not. I also got the audiobook from Audible with a free credit so that I can try listening to it uh, while reading it also. The audiobook's about 25 hours, which shockingly is not the longest audiobook I've ever listened to. Um, I'm refilling my travel version of my moisturizer, which I recurringly take whenever I go spend the night at Josh's. And in fact, contact cases. Really great for travel size stuff. Anyway, so I spent last night at Josh's. We had a very, very lazy weekend. We went and got Chipotle. I played some Grand Theft Auto uh, and then we watched season five of Rick and Morty. Then because Disney Plus recently revealed that they're going to be revamping the animated X-Men TV show, I put on the X-Men TV show to just relive that time of my life when I couldn't watch anything else, even though that show came out before I was born. <laughs> I've also been craving bagels crazy bad lately. So we went and got bagels and they were freaking delicious. I got a Asiago jalapeno. Anyway, so actual book updates thus far. I am at page 425 and I've officially hit the point where they are trying the Manson family and my god the amount of circumstantial evidence they have is insane but they have so little physical evidence that I'm really curious on how this trial is going to go. Not only that but with the issue of just Manson trying to constantly interfere 
interfere with the trial itself by being his own lawyer, causing issues with the other defendants and their lawyers, trying to maintain maintain control when he doesn't have any. Fascinating in terms of looking at his psychology and how he is desperate to be the man in charge. But at the same time, oh my god, this guy's kind of an idiot because it's just some of the stuff he does is reinforcing their case of he has such a strong hold over all of these people that he's literally ensuring that they take his advice more seriously than any lawyer in the situation, which crazy. I also officially read through all the little sections with the photographs and stuff. They actually blocked out the victims on those photos of the crime scene, which I thought was respectful. And then on top of that, just these people and it's terrifying how normal they all look and yet they were all sucked in to this man's total insane plot. It's just... It's fascinating. I'm really enjoying it. It's Thanksgiving week and I am actually going to be the only one cooking for Wednesday since my mom had hand surgery and because of that I'm really hoping I can listen to a lot of this audiobook when I'm cooking and maybe work through a good portion of it just with that alone but still pushing through. I think I'm going to pick up to physically read Hunger by Roxane Gay tomorrow. I'm just not really feeling reading right now. I am working on finishing the latest episode of Great British Bake Off because I didn't get to watch it on Friday and it's so freaking good though. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous about how the finale is gonna go <laughs> because I like everyone in the semifinals so much. They're all so freaking precious. Also, recommend movie on Netflix, Red Notice. It is a heist movie with The Rock basically playing himself and Ryan Reynolds basically playing himself plus Gal Gadot and oh, <laughs> It was a really fun time. Very much recommend a great action heist movie. Anyway, um, that is it for today. I am going to get ready for bed while I finish Great British Bake Off. So um, this is going to be an absolutely terrible angle, but we're just going to work with it um, because I'm about to get ready for bed. Also, hi, hey, hello, it's Tuesday. I forgot to update yesterday, Mabby. I started into hunger and I actually got to about page 53 and it's already super heavy. I'm not really surprised. Uh, specifically, it is a memoir of Roxane Gay, specifically discussing her body, her issues with an eating disorder, her discussions around her mental health and how eating became a comfort for her in order to try and combat her PTSD from being gang raped. So very, very heavy read. I am just trying to soak it all in and see things from her perspective and it's very, I don't want to say brave because it sounds patronizing, but I think it's very interesting that she utilized writing as a form of therapy for herself and she is very aware of that and discusses it, how she has always turned to books and writing her entire life and how it's it's become therapeutic for her and even the way she writes about the terrible trauma she endured is very much trying to distance herself from it and make it seem like it is a story that happened to someone else rather than to herself. It's very sad, it is very deep, it is very personal and so thus far I don't really feel like I could possibly rate this because it just is something so incredibly personal and specific to her even though I'm not even even 20% in and I'm already saying I don't know if I'll be able to read this book but I am enjoying it. I am very interested and I just love the way her brain works and how she has written out these thought processes and is trying to express her emotions and her relationship with food and weight and how that has created such a barrier between her and the outside world. I am trying to also <laughs> remember where I was in reading Helter Skelter because I've been listening to a lot of the audiobook today. Um, no, I'm past this. I think I remember reading the section when I was driving home. I have actually hit around the next sticky note, so we're doing good. Bang. Um, have to finish this next little section. Like I mentioned before, we are into the trial and it is crazy. It's so interesting to see how Bugliosi laid out all of these pieces of circumstantial evidence to try and cooperate one another to showcase a pattern and a intent behind the actions of Manson and the family, which is pretty 
pretty much the driving force of majority of the trial. Also, it's interesting to see how Manson's lawyer is trying to help Manson by just coming up with all of these ridiculous objections to every single little thing and just seeing what works. It's like he's just throwing a bunch of stuff and seeing what sticks to the wall and it's really interesting for a lawyer to be doing something like this. He's actually been held in contempt of the court twice now I think and spent at least three days in jail. <laughs> Very interesting tactic for a lawyer. Also Manson is just, it's like he doesn't understand that doing these crazy things in the name of trying to protect himself and prove himself as innocent just looks more likely that he is guilty and is incriminating him further. It's again just oh my god the more I read of this the more I am just fascinated by this man's brain and I, like how he comes to the conclusions he does. It's crazy. So uh it's Tuesday and you guys know I go to my brother's um excuse my raccoon eyes uh I'm pretty tired and ready for bed but I agreed to watch the Lord of the Rings movies because I've never seen them and my brother insists that I have to watch all of the extended editions so I watched the longest movie I have ever watched in my life today which was three and a half hours. <laughs> I have never seen Titanic because I refuse to waste that much of my life watching a movie about a boat sinking and yet I watched a movie pretty equal in length today. However that being said I did actually enjoy it. The movie was shot in a very beautiful way. I could not help but wonder how they managed so many of these scenes specifically in terms of like the hobbits and the dwarfs compared to all of the humans and the elves like in the size difference was really interesting it just had me thinking about it the entire atmosphere of the movie was beautiful all of the background all of the cgi amazing it is gorgeously shot the music paired perfectly with many of the moments i really i really did enjoy it my only complaint is just it was really long <laughs> and i'm sure the aspects of it that are put in in the extended edition compared to the regular cut are world building aspects which I will be honest I probably could have gone without but I do think were interesting in adding that extra layer of background to the movie. Even though I probably could have been happy without it, I did appreciate it in this. It was just a really long movie. <laughs> I am gonna get ready for bed now. Tomorrow is Wednesday and I get to cook for a majority of the day for Thanksgiving. That's gonna be fun. I also have become recently obsessed with Roswell, New Mexico. It's on Netflix and it's 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 like a CW show. It is a remake of the Roswell TV show from the 90s. I've barely watched like three episodes but I already am just super intrigued and interested and honestly want to throw out my TBR and watch that in my free time. But I'm not doing that because I'm being good and staying true to myself and going to complete my nonfiction November TBR. Even if I don't finish the rest of my TBR, I'm going to finish these books for nonfiction November. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Hey y'all, so I officially finished Helter Skelter today while I was cooking and you know, all in all, I'm actually really glad I read this. Definitely think if you don't like true crime, are not interested in like the very specifics of police investigations and then the actual courtroom drama aspects, you would not like this. But if you have any passing interest in true crime at all and like you know about the Manson family murders but you don't know all of the specifics, I would recommend this. This was crazy interesting. I'm actually very glad I read it. It was just so fascinating to learn all of these additional things that I feel like really give you more of an in-depth look into the murders and more of an understanding to why it has become such a cultural phenomenon. I feel like a lot of people, if you say Helter Skelter, at the very least will know what you're referencing and if they don't, they're definitely going to know the name Manson. And that was something that was really interesting that the author actually addressed in the epilogue was that people are still obsessed with this to this day. Unfortunately, people still look up to Manson. Thankfully, he is now dead but still crazy that people think all of the things he was preaching and the hate he was just putting out into the world, they agree with it and think he was some kind of prophet who was trying to bring about a better world. I It's disgusting, but chunky boy, but I finished it. I got dressing, cranberry sauce, 
quiches and pumpkin pie as well as a cake all cooked today. I don't know how much b-roll I got of everything but I did a lot of cooking. I started at about 11 and I probably officially finished around 6? No, maybe 7. No, I, I think 6 is better. No, it was 7. <laughs> Yeah, so I was cooking for quite a while. It felt very nice to relax and take a shower and my parents and I are working through Schitt's Creek. This is my third time watching Schitt's Creek, but their first time. And I love it. We hit season three and met Patrick, who is like honestly one of my absolutely favorite characters. So happy about that. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving and I still have to get up in the morning and reheat everything and get on the turkey. Yeah can't wait but i am very excited to see all my family i don't know how much b-roll i will really get that is it for now i will talk to you guys later i don't think i'm gonna get anything else read tonight but i might read something tomorrow Hey guys, so it's Friday and uh, Josh and I are actually going to go with his parents to get a Christmas tree because they get a live one and my family has always done fakes. So this is going to be a new experience. Definitely excited. Not sure how it's going to go. Hopefully I don't have to cut down the tree because <laughs> I mean, actually I've been working out, but like still not that great. <laughs> I have gotten zip zilch zero red because yesterday after Thanksgiving, Josh and I basically laid around and I forced him to watch a bunch of episodes of Roswell with me because I'm now officially obsessed and Malix is my new OTP and um, I love those dumbasses. Uh, do, 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 do. Anything else to really report? <laughs> I had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you guys did too. I was very worn out, but it was super entertaining to hang out with the whole family, to see all my little nieces and nephews. And yes, it was wonderful. I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving as well if you celebrated it. Uh, Canadian people, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving last month. I actually went and downloaded the audiobook for Hunger, so I am planning to try and listen to a little bit of that when I'm driving over to Josh's. I think Roxane Gay reads it herself, so that's interesting. I always love when authors read their own memoirs. I read Seth Rogen's earlier this month. I don't think it's technically a memoir. It was more like a collection of essays, but he read it in it just it feels as though the tone can be so much better conveyed when it's the author reading the audiobook so you can better understand what kind of experience they were intending for you and I'm hoping that Roxane Gay's will do the same thing. I don't think I've really ever listened to an audiobook by her before because I physically read Bad Feminist. I think I updated you guys the last time about what I'd read so far into Hunger. It's definitely a heavy read um, so I'm really intrigued to see if listening to the audiobook makes it feel less heavy or more so. Not sure which direction that's gonna go yet, but we'll find out. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Might have a little bit of fun b-roll for you at the Christmas tree farm. So it is Saturday and I got back from Josh's. I'm actually going to be getting ready here soon. I'm going out to dinner with some friends tonight for one of their birthdays. But um, before that, I wanted to give you guys an official update. I had a great time hanging out with Josh. We went with his parents to get the Christmas tree, which was really cool. It was an in interesting experience. Thankfully, I did not have to cut down the tree. Josh did that, but we did do a little hayride and got some free popcorn and it was, it was fun. Also, Josh and I ended up going to Half Price Books because he is a wonderful boyfriend and was encouraging of me continuing to fill my shelves. I was not intending to buy anything, honestly. I went in, was like, oh, it's Black Friday. I, it won't hurt to look. Well, Half Price Books didn't even have any Black Friday sales going on. And yet I still bought two books. First was Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I've heard amazing things about this. This is the first in a new fantasy series that I believe the basis for the fantastical elements is around indigenous folklore and mythology. So that's really interesting and unique. Kind of helps this book to stand out. I've heard amazing things. I do want to pick it up at some point. Then I also got The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I read her first book, The Night Circus, last year and I loved it. The writing is gorgeous and eloquent 
eloquent, descriptive, and whimsical. It really draws you into the story, but also creates such an amazing atmosphere around it. And I actually picked up that book on the recommendation from Hannah at A Clockwork Reader because it's her favorite book. And recently she finally read this one and did a vlog on it. Loved it just as much, possibly even more. And ever since then, I've been very intrigued about trying to pick it up myself. I actually don't really even know what the story itself is about. I think it's like a book within a book kind of situation. It was just so beautiful. This copy is absolutely gorgeous and it was in fantastic condition for being used and I got it for $10. So I can't be too mad at myself about that. Afterwards, Josh and I went and got ramen, which was delicious. And we got crumble cookies. Uh, the cranberry white chocolate was my absolute favorite and um, might be my new absolute favorite because that's just an amazing kind of cookie and people don't make it enough. I believe I said in my last update that, that I got the audiobook for Hunger and I listened to some of that while I was driving to and from Josh's. So I'm actually currently at 187 and I think this is right around 300 pages. So I've surpassed the halfway point. I've come to realize that on top of there being the little chapters, there are also separate sections, but they aren't labeled. They only have a Roman numeral, but I think each of them does kind of have a common theme connecting all of the little chapters together. And one of them that I read that probably was my favorite was Roxane Gay discussing how weight is perceived and treated in famous circles with celebrities. There was a section where she talked about reality TV when it comes to weight, like that TV show The Biggest Loser. And one thing I really appreciate with Roxane Gay's writing is she's not afraid to call out her own hypocrisies. She discusses how, how on The Biggest Loser they kind of make it seem like these people are less human because because they are fat and they aren't worth near as much compared to a skinny person and whenever they lose that weight and become skinny they are worth more and they reward them for that which is very unfortunate because being fat does not make you less of a human you should still be treated just as appropriately as if you were thin but she also mentions that she's watched those tv shows she's used them for encouragement in her own life of trying to lose weight and she also understands the problems of them which is something i really liked that she did in bad feminist as well is highlighted. There are these things out there that make it really hard for you to push against them because you know they're problematic but at the same time like our culture and media has made it so enticing to us that we want to like those things even though we realize they are not good things and I, I just I love that about her writing. She also mentioned Oprah and her relationship with Wei and how she's gone up and down and had that be very public what with being a spokesperson for different diet companies but then at the same time being the spokesperson for like other food companies that aren't healthy there was a really great line where she quoted oprah who said inside every overweight woman is a woman she knows that she can be roxanne gay's response was i ate that thin woman and she was delicious but unsatisfying i just thought that was a very thought-provoking line and i really loved it definitely went in my favorite lines spread. This section was what I was really wanting when I went into this because I thought it would be so interesting to hear her thoughts about weight and how it is perceived in the media and how that affects everyone else in our culture's relationship with weight and how we perceive other people and their weight. Something actually she did talk about with that is is not just treating people differently because they are fat but also treating people differently because they are too thin which I think is something that gets talked aside a lot because of fat phobia becoming a big topic of conversation but at the same time even though there is such a thing as thin privilege there's also a thing of people being tormented for being too thin. I am going to try and finish listening to some more of this while I'm getting ready tonight and then probably when I'm driving. I don't know because it is raining and it's probably going to be dark by the time I leave so I might not listen to the audiobook while driving just so I can focus on driving more. Because of this being a already extended weekly vlog, I'm just gonna officially close it out here. Hopefully I will finish Hunger before the end of the month and I will have my full thoughts and a actual review for it in my wrap-up. But 
Thank you so much for coming to my channel today, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as follow me on my Goodreads, Instagram, Storygraph, and Tumblr, which are all in the description if you're interested in keeping up with what I am reading. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you. Bye.